Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Hello and welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights here in London. Immuno-oncology is a hot area currently and many, many companies are actively working to bring new therapeutics to market. One such company based in Cambridge in the UK is FSTAR. FSTAR are taking a bispecific antibody approach, which is a little different to, to some of the other companies. And with us today to talk a little bit about how they're progressing is John Harron, the CEO. John, welcome. Thank you. Um, so maybe first we should, for those who aren't familiar with FSTAR, um, just talk a little bit about your technology mm -hmm. and, and what it is you're bringing to the marketplace. Yep. So uh, antibodies are uh, really very successful, in, in especially in oncology, and, uh, and they bind to uh, a foreign structure on, on, for example, on the tumor cells, and, and, and thereby they can induce in immune responses against the tumor cell. Uh, a bispecific antibody essentially is, is an antibody that has two activities in one, in one drug. So it's uh, an antibody that has been engineered to include a second binding site, and therefore it can work against two different uh, structures on the cancer cell. It can also work to uh, redirect uh, to the cancer cell uh, an immune component, so there's um, the possibility of combining different mechanisms of, ac of action into, a, into one drug. Uh, and we are particularly focused in oncology and, and are developing uh, bispecific antibodies that, uh, that uh, really are, are supposed to be uh, leveraged in the immuno-oncology space to, to drive uh, very strong immune responses in cancer patients and, and thereby hopefully get to cures in, 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 a, in a proportion of patients. Um, and when you embarked on this approach, were you doing it in isolation and then checkpoint inhibitors came along and the, the immuno-oncology field mushroomed and, and, and you've, you've ridden that wave or, or which way around did it happen? Yeah, uh, so the, the antibody therapeutics in, in oncology has, has um, been developing over the last 20 years and it's a really important uh, development for, for patients and immuno-oncology is really recent uh, development uh, mostly from 2012-13 onwards uh, and, and when we were developing our technology this, this was a really uh, fantastic place to, to apply the bispecific antibody technology we have. It's very ideally suited for immuno-oncology because we can, we can leverage the ability to, to bring together tumor specificity and an immune component specificity in the same drug. So when we decided a, a compound strategy, it was obvious to us that our immune oncology, which was just beginning to be um, um, sexy at that time, uh, that it would be the place for us to be. So it's, you've got a lot of programs running. That, that sounds like an, an expensive uh, thing to be doing. How, how's the company funded? So we're, we are a privately held uh, venture-backed company. We were founded in 2006. Um, uh, we have raised um, um, just north of uh, 40 million euro in venture funding. The last round was in, in 2013. Uh, we have a, also a business model where we establish asset-centric vehicles um, around individual programs where we have partnering interest. And then uh, the partnering agreement we, we enter into is typically we, we prefer uh, an option to buy structure. So we have a little bit of a built to buy um, uh, structure in our, in our company uh, around these separate entities. And that has generated um, a, a large amount of return uh, to the company. Uh, so we have in fact paid back uh, our investors uh, more than 1x uh, already. Uh, and, and, and we have raised uh, close to 200 million euro in, in non-dilutive revenue over the last five years. You, you talked a bit about the asset centric model. Yeah. Um, but does Adopting that model preclude you being an acquisition target for, a, for maybe a big farmer? Um, no, not really. Uh, um, in fact, I think it's actually made it easier uh, to be an acquisition target. So it's, it's possible to basically uh, attract uh, the maximal valuation for, for individual components of the business. It's, it's important to understand that our IP platform is, is a broad-based mm -hmm. technology IP platform that can be applied in, in across all disease areas. We have a Therapeutic focus in immuno oncology ourselves because we are, we're just 85 people and, and obviously there's a limit to how much we can be an expert in ourselves. Uh, and therefore, leveraging the value outside of, of, uh, of immuno oncology requires partnerships. Uh, we've done that with Denali in, 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 in central nervous system uh, diseases. Uh, but from an acquisition point of view, if someone wanted to buy our platform simply for the use in infectious disease, uh, they would not pay for all the other areas, right. obviously. And this model allows us to, in fact, um, 
uh, parcel out the individual value components and, 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 and sell them separately, but not only as a license. We can still do that, obviously, but mm. we can sell them also as, as, um, as acquisitions where we build a, an individual company uh, from our platform that, that really owns the therapy space of uh, I'm making this up, infectious disease, for example. Right, yeah. right. But you mentioned Denali there, which is yep. um, a CNS deal. Yes. Um, and everybody thought, well, you're just an immuno-oncology. Yes. Not just an immuno-oncology, yep. that's doing you a disservice. You're an immuno-oncology company. Yes. But the technology is applicable. Yeah. And, and is and, it the same model? Is it inflammation? Is it, it? It's a neurodegenerative disease uh, that uh, Denali is working in. and. Um, and, and they approached us, they really liked our platform and, and, and asked us about um, the opportunity to collaborate with mm -hmm. us to enable um, the transgression of, of a monoclonal antibody into the, into the central nervous system. So our um, scope in, in, in the collaboration is to, build, to generate a building block that will pull the antibody into the uh, central nervous system. So we, we create a binder for the blood-brain barrier, uh, a receptor on that. And that's pretty much what's disclosed uh, about the collaboration. Okay. Uh, they have chosen the target for that, uh, and they have certain options uh, in addition. And, and then um, they can leverage this building block in their own therapeutic strategies for their own targets that they have for the, for the actual disease agents. Um, right. and, and if they really like uh, what comes out of this, they can then acquire that particular company which uh, holds the rights for this uh, building block. But, but again, another validation of your asset-centric model. Yes. They, ha they have an option to buy. Yeah, so we put that program into F-Star Gamma. Uh, so that company, F-Star Gamma, which is the third of our entities, um, essentially owns the rights for this particular building block uh, right. through a license from F-Star. And then Denali has an option to acquire Gamma. And if they acquire Gamma, then they essentially will own uh, exclusively this building block uh, right. for all uses. And, and, and with um, our most recent deal with Merck, uh, where we, that's now the, f the fourth uh, asset-centric vehicle, so F-Star Delta, uh, we call them Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Uh, and and F-Star Delta is a basket of uh, five programs that has been uh, licensed uh, into Delta from F-Star and then Merck Serono or, or Merck, um, uh, German Merck has, mm -hmm. um, has um, paid for an option, an exclusive, exclusive option to acquire F Star Delta. Uh, and the option there is, is, is time limited um, in, in a few years. Uh, they, have, um, okay. have the, um, they, they have to make up the, the decision as to whether they would like to exercise that option. And it's, as you say, it's five programs against yeah. a range of targets? Yeah, the, they're all immuno-oncology programs. So, so they're, they're homegrown programs that we have developed in F Star. Um, and uh, and um, they paid um, um, a very significant uh, upfront payment, uh, which uh, comprises uh, R&D funding. Mm -hmm. It comprises some milestone payments uh, to the company during the option period. Uh, it also comprises uh, some payments to the shareholders uh, of Delta, which are you know the shareholders of Airstar. Uh, and um, and there's also a milestone payment that is um, going to be. Um, uh, do quite soon, mm -hmm. uh, and altogether uh, that was 115 million euro. Uh, that um, constitutes that option payment, uh, and then the total deal value is is in the order of 1 billion uh, euro, um, including the 115. So the rest, the exercise plus a couple of milestone payments um, further down, uh, is is the actual buyout payments that that Merck has to pay if they if they choose to exercise the option. But no royalty stream because it's a buyout. Yes. So in, in, in this model, um, we, we monetize the platform and the products mm -hmm. uh, without um, um, a sort of tail end of, uh, of royalty payments. Uh, essentially, uh, we tr we, we've tried to do it this way so that uh, we create a, a more near term you know, visibility for our shareholders to the liquidity this way. And looking to the future, I, do you, is the strategy just to crank the handle, if you like, at different targets and different areas and repeat this? Um, yes, uh, every time with the ambition to take it a little further. Mm -hmm. um, so again, uh, in, in this particular instance, the program that uh, is the most advanced program in, uh, in the Merck uh, deal with Delta is just about to hit the clinic and it's a bispecific antibody that targets uh, pd one and LAC3. Mm -hmm. So that's the only compound where we have disclosed the targets. Um, and. Uh, and my hope is that if we do another deal, that uh, it would be possible for us to, uh, to at that stage, have taken it even further. But, uh, but of course, uh, it all depends on, on, on what a partner wants. 
Understood. So, and, and in the future, you, we talked a little bit about you could be an acquisition target for mm -hmm. somebody. Yeah. You, you could IPO. Yes. You might go back for more funding. All the options are open right now. Yes. The, we haven't closed any doors. People sometimes ask me about uh, this particular model. You know, doesn't it make it impossible for us to ever uh, do an IPO? And, and that's in fact not the case. But it requires a little bit of a, a sort of gym gymnastics from a, mm -hmm. a legal point of view. But we've engineered into our uh, agreements both with uh, Denali and, and with Merck that uh, if we elect to do an IPO then we can uh, introduce a, a, a new holding on top of the asset-centric vehicles and there, thereby in a, in a way uh, conflate the model into one company again and and it's not it doesn't require you know an actual merger it's essentially uh, just in, including a new holding on top and then we could list that company and then Denali and, and Merck would uh, essentially um, buy the, they would be kept whole. I mean, mm -hmm. they would essentially buy the uh, you know, Delta and uh, or, or Gamma out of the holding rather than from the shareholders. Understood. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on how that progresses yes. and whether you end up going down one path or the other or whether you run out of Greek names to call your assets and yeah. vehicles. Uh, think of something else. Not likely in the near term. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, best of luck for the future and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Adrian. Yeah. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.